What's up guys, Yankee here and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can run background jobs on your terminal. So it's a pretty neat thing. Uh, if you are someone who opens a lot of different tabs on your terminal, or if you are someone who just, you know, likes to open multiple instances of your terminal window, you're not going to do that from today. You are going to be a productive human being. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get started. So we want to do everything in our terminal, right? So we do not want to open any windows. We do not want to open any tabs. So you come across this situation a lot. Uh, let me open this project directory, which holds a Flask web application server. If I do Flask run, and it is going to show all of these logs and I cannot get my terminal back. And this is the kind of situation which leads you to open multiple tabs. And all I have to do to get back to my terminal is do control C, but this is not how I want to do things, right? So let me run that flask server again. And now what I want to do is put this uh, process, this flask run process in the background job. So I want to suspend it, keep it in the job queue. So to do that, all I have to do is press control Z on my keyboard and it says it has been suspended. And now once the task or the job is suspended, you can view them using the command jobs. So as you can see, I have a single job and it is suspended. It is not running. Uh, even if I go to localhost 5000, uh, it's not going to result in anything. So let me do that. Localhost 5000 and the server is hung up uh, basically because my process is suspended. So, uh, what I now want to do is run this process in the background. So to do that, I have a command called bz. So this comes baked in all the uh, terminals, uh, bash terminal, bash JSH or fish shell. Uh, if you are using one of those, it comes built in in that. And all I have to do is put the job number here. So bz percentage one will make this job run in the background. So yeah, bz stands for background. And as you can see, uh, it says continued flask run. So if I do jobs again, it's going to say it's running. Now, if I want to bring those jobs into the foreground, what I can do is simply do FG since there is only one job right now and it shows plus sign on the last recent job uh, that was held in the queue. So if I do FG, it's going to, you know, put me in the prompt. And if I do anything, uh, let's say if I go to my browser again and do local host 5000, now it's going to show the exception into my terminal. And if I want to suspend it again, I can do control Z, uh, look at the jobs, BZ percentage one. So yeah, it runs my job in the background. Not only that, you can put multiple jobs in the background as well. Let me use at stop. I'm viewing the system resource utilization. And if you want to suspend it, you can just do control jet again and go to jobs and it is going to show you the suspended jobs. So, you know, the last suspended job was at stop and it shows plus sign uh, prefix to it. And if we simply do FG, it's going to open at stop by default. But what if I want to open my flask run? For that, all I have to do is FG percentage and the name of the job, uh, which is this one or two. So the flask run resides on one. So I'm going to do FG percentage one. So I will have that prompt again. And if I go to my browser, refresh this page, and it's again going to show me all the error logs right in my terminal. So let's say I want to suspend it again, control Z. Right. So you can run multiple jobs in the background. Uh, let me give you one example. Let's say sudo pacman mirrors minus F. So this is a process that takes a lot of time to find the fastest mirror for my repository. So if I do this and let me put my password and right. So if I do Z, it's going to suspend jobs. So that is a recent job that is on the number three. Now, if I have to run it on background, all I can do is bz% is 3 and it's going to run. And as you can see, uh, although I have put this in the background, it will show me the logs of the process it is running. So before I show you how you can handle the logs on the terminal for your background jobs, uh, I want to show you how you can run process in the background in another way. Let's say I'm going to run at stop. You can simply append the ampersand sign uh, on the end. And it's again like going to suspend this task and put it in the background job. So if I do jobs again, it's in the background job. And to run it, I need to do FG. So 
whatever you want to try you can use ampersand sign at the end of the command or you can simply do control jet and put it in the suspend mode again now let's go and see how we can suppress those logs from the backgrounds ops so there are multiple ways of suppressing the std out and std error messages in in our terminal uh, but first uh, we are going to see the most simplest one uh, so what happens when you run a process in the background is it's going to create a sub cell and when an error occurs the std out and the std error is going to connect to the parent process or the parent cell and display the output so we want to completely suppress it uh, so what i can do is flask run give this and slash dip slash null so what i am doing is i'm i'm dumping all of the std error uh, which is defined by number two along with std out uh, defined by number one into slash div slash null so which is kind of like a black hole on a linux file system uh, when you dump things here it does not exist on your system so if i do this it's not going to show any logs and i can simply like suspend it on the background control z and again uh, so all the processes or jobs and i want to run the background job on flask run so bz percentage 2 right so it's running on the background now if i go to my terminal and refresh this page once again i'm not going to see any output on the terminal so yeah that's pretty neat and uh, now let's bring back the at stop uh, fg percentage one just so we are on the right page i'm going to quit it right so jobs fg again if i want to quit it Control c but i'm not going to do that uh, what I'm going to show you here is I will go to my another terminal and do things but before I go there I want to close this terminal right so once I close the terminal session if I do jobs there are no jobs left like I've said uh, all of these jobs are associated to a terminal session uh, so when I close my terminal uh, the terminal is going to send the signal hang up signal to all the running jobs so if you want to see it uh, let me go to bash cell kill minus l and it is on the first so it is signal hang up uh, when the terminal exists it's going to send this signal to the processes and processes are going to kill themselves so if i do ps3 minus p and grape flask i'm not going to find any processes from flask so let me go back to that flask directory one more time so this time i'm going to show you how you can truly run your processes in the background so even if you you know close your terminal session even if you close your terminal window the process are going to persist so for that uh, we basically have two commands one is no hop meaning no hang up signal and another is disown so we are going to look at both of them first of all no hop so to run our process in such a way that it does not get killed when the terminal session is exited uh, what we have to do is use no hop flask run and use the ampersand sign to run it in the background so what no hop does is it actually ignores all the hang up signal that is emitted by the terminal so even though it receives the hang up signal it's simply going to ignore it and not kill itself so if i do no hop flask run and ampersand sign it's going to you know like uh, display this message uh, this also does another thing uh, if i do ls it has created a no hop dot out file so it will actually pump all of the logs that are generated uh, which are std out logs and the std error logs directly to the no hop dot out file so if you want to run your processes in the background uh, that does not get killed by hung up signal and that does not produce any logs on the std out then you can use no hop right so let me go back to my browser again and if i refresh this browser uh, there is no logs but if i do cat no hop dot out then it stores all the logs that has been generated in this session and if we do jobs it still shows that uh, we have run the flask run command with the no hop prefix so now uh, moving on to the next item so let me just close this foreground job and another way to actually make your process truly a background job is to use the disown so no hop is actually useful when you know you want to run that process in the background right like we saw earlier no hop flask run i knew from the very beginning that i wanted to run this in the background and i do not want it to be killed when the terminal was closed what if if i have already started my process and i wanted it to leave despite receiving the hang up signal so that is where disown commands comes in so if i do flask run I will suspend this and if I look at jobs and busy percentage one so it's running in the background so 
now what i can do is use the command disown and percent is one so if there are multiple jobs you can use the job id uh, right now it's just a single job so i'm going to use the job id one so if i do disown and percent is one it's simply going to ignore or let's say it's not even ignore it's not gonna receive any hang up signal from the terminal even if it closes so if you have to send a signal hang up you have to do it manually right so that's pretty cool but it does not suppresses the logs like the no hop uh, but if you exit this terminal uh, let me just open a new terminal panel here so if you exit this terminal and if you look at the jobs it's not even going to put it in the jobs because it removes the process from the jobs it basically blocks the process from receiving any hang up signals and now if i go to my browser and refresh this again uh, there are no logs but if i was in the earlier terminal session i would be receiving logs but the whole point of doing this on is to close the terminal so yeah so next i'm going to show you a few extra things uh, that you can play around with while using background jobs so we saw that background jobs are pretty cool right but how do they actually work so for this demo i'm going to split my terminal again and i'm going to open a bash shell here uh, so i'm going to do kill minus l so this is going to show all the signals that uh, my cell can receive and this is going to come handy later on but again let me go back to flasker and let's say run flask run again okay so it's already in use uh, i'm going to kill it using p kill minus 18 so yeah i'm going to come back to that later on so let me run that flask server again so what happens when we press ctrl z is the terminal is actually going to send a signal called sig tstp so if i do man uh, 7 and look at the signal right and if i search for sig tstp it's going to show me the signal so it says stop type at terminal so this is what ctrl z is triggering and i can look at it using kill minus l so sig tstp uh, let me just grip it So yeah, uh, this is the name of the signal and this is the numeric representation of the signal. So if I want to do control Z as in send SIG TSTP signal to my process, what I can do is, uh, let me make this window a bit bigger. What I can do here is uh, get the process ID of the flask run command. So we can do this in a multiple of ways. So first one is PX, uh, PS minus AX and grave for flask so it's going to show you know like uh, multiple process ids and the process id with the least uh, that is 81 is going to be the parent process id and uh, so yeah that's one way of doing it another way of doing it to actually see uh, which one is parent which one is children you can do ps3 minus p to show the process id and again grip flask so as we can see the parent process is the tmux server and the tmux server has forked a new process called zsh and inside of zsh uh, which is my terminal on this upper window it has created a process for flask and at the end it has created a thread for python so the process id we are interested in is this one 226781 so i'm going to show you the most easy way uh, this was just to see how the process were being created in our terminal uh, next what we can do is simply p grip and name of the command we ran so it's on the process tree if i do this it's simply going to give me this process id number so to send the signal to the flask process what i'm going to do is use the kill command so kill is normally used to uh, you know kill processes but the main purpose of this command is to send signals to the processes so yeah uh, signal uh, what i'm going to do is send you know signal tstp which we saw whose numeric code was 20 so so kill uh, minus 20 and i'm going to enter the process id so 226781 and keep tab on the upper window and once i send this the process is going to get suspended right so on the upper window we saw that the process got suspended and if i do jobs here we can actually find the flask process being suspended and kept in the job queue right so it's suspended but it's not running in the background right so again we can send another signal to actually run this process in the background and for that it uses a signal called sig continue and i'm going to grave it and its numeric command is number 18 right so again uh, what i'm going to do is use the same process id 
and use the 18 as the kill command code to send the signal so kill minus 18 and i'm going to do a command substitution here uh, which is simply going to grab the process that is running flask and if i go to the upper window and just do jobs it says it is running so we have successfully sent the continuous signal from our terminal to the process to actually run in the background right so it's pretty neat the terminal actually supports all of these signals but it does not support like signaling to actually uh, run the fz command so that you have to do it manually uh, so if i run fz uh, i'm going to get that uh, flask process again and uh, refreshing the browser will show me the logs and again uh, if i want to do like you know control z i can do minus 20 the process id again and it's going to get suspended look at it using the jobs and again use the 18 to run it in the background it's running so it's pretty neat so that's what's going on behind the scene the terminal is just sending out the signals to the process on what to do right and now finally we should be asking a few interesting questions about no hop and disown because as we saw earlier if we do ps3 uh, minus p and grip flask right so the flask process has parent process uh, which is the zss cell that it depends on so when we close this zss cell what is going to happen to this process id or this process right so we are going to see exactly that uh, let me go to my foreground task close it so what i can do right now is look at the jobs and disown the job number one again and we won't have any jobs so the concept is once we kill this terminal then it is going to run in the background right so let me just kill this terminal x y so while we were at it i actually closed that uh, flask process and ran another one so i'm going to see a different you know process id here so it's two two something something but now if i go to my terminal and do ps3 right uh, minus p process id and grip for flask as you can see there are no parent processes here there are no parent id but we can dig a little bit more deeper and find out what its actually parent id is so let me do just that so ps minus f i'm going to do command substitution again and p grip and the process id of the flask right so once we do that we can see that the parent id of our flask process is actually one which means it gets directly attached to the init process or the root process that gets executed in the user space when the system is booting so that's pretty neat so you can actually bring the disowned processes to the foreground using a tool called screen uh, which i do not have installed right now and it is beyond the scope of this video but if you want to install an external tool to actually you know manage all of these processes and terminal sessions one of the cool thing or one of the cool tool you can download is called tmox so with tmox uh, let's say i have a long running session uh, like at stop maybe for instance and if if I want to put it in the background and run it I can simply quit this session so using my keyboard shortcut Control B and D so it says it is in detached mode and if I do tmux ls it's going to show me the window I can like you know attach to it again right and bring me to this so you can do multiple cool things here uh, like create a new window right so I have two windows here you can use multiple panes and you can be productive with it comment down below if you want to see a video on how to make your terminal sessions actually really really productive so guys that's it for this video if you like this video give me a thumbs up comment down below if you have any queries or suggestions and make sure you subscribe to my channel because i'll be coming out with more cool contents in the future so till next time i'm yankee signing off